Okay, so I've taken delivery today. This is something I really should have done um, a lot earlier for my uh, Richie Gretchen uh, 8 inch, my RC8. Because I'm at 1,624 millimeters, um, really the guide scope isn't cutting it for guiding. Basically, off axis guiding is what I need to be doing with that scope, and I don't know really why I haven't looked at this before. I normally have the 120mm Pro, but I've gone for the next camera from that, which is the 290 uh, Mini MM Pro. So this, I keep saying Pro, but I don't even think it's Pro, I think the 290 Mini. So this will be the guide camera. Um, and it uh, should be a lot more sensitive than the 120 and I've bought the ZWO off-axis guider so it comes with all of the attachments you need and uh, this is the off-axis guider here and uh, from what, what I understand the hardest part with all of this is getting the um, the two cameras in focus at the same time. So you've got your off-axis guider and it comes with a number of um, attachments to help you fit it to most things. I've got the ZWO filter wheel so you need the smaller of the two uh, attachment pieces here. Now you can uh, put the off-axis guider either side of the filter wheel um, but I personally think it's better before the filter wheel because then the filters are not going to cause you any problems. I've got um, a three nanometer hydrogen alpha filter which doesn't let through very much light at all so I can imagine that guiding with that could be quite difficult so it's better to have this in front of the filter wheel. There's two sides to the off-axis guider prism you want the flat side to be facing the stars basically and I put that into position and this can actually rotate a bit, so if you do have trouble finding a star, you have got a small amount of rotation available if you undo these screws. But I've not actually had any problems yet, so I've not had to move it. So once it's in place, it stays there. The one adjustment I wanted to make was the prism is a little bit down here. And while my uh, sensor is uh, in landscape flat, that's absolutely fine, but I've got the ability to rotate my camera here. I've got a very small little rotating wing there. When it's in portrait, the uh, prism is actually covering the so it's covering a big part of the sensor, so that's going to cause lots of problems uh, with shadows and other things. At the moment, it's quite a long way down. So it's got two two main adjustments. We've got this one here, which is loose, and then we've got another one here, which is... Um, an allen bolt and we need to just remove loosen that and that will allow us to move this up and down so I'm just gonna it's a little bit tight actually so we just take a make sure it's in nice and firm so we don't strip anything and gently undo it so what I need to do if I take I haven't got the uh, reducer on this is the spacers I need if I just put them in place and what I can make sure is, I don't know if you can see, but if I look down there, I'm going to make sure that the prism, when I raise it, I obviously don't raise it too much and block the actual light path getting to it. So I want it inside, just inside, so it's as far away from the sensor as possible, but going to collect the light from the, the scope. So I just do up this thumb screw to hold it in place double check its position so if I just bring that up here you can see there that we've got the the prism at the top there 
fully in show but it's not blocking the actual sensor I'm going to take these extension pieces off and that might show you it a bit clearer and now what I'm going to do is just nip up that bolt there so it's held nice and firmly and that's good so that's the main part of the off axis guiding in place and as I said if you undo these you've got a certain amount of turn <clears throat> so if you're struggling to find a star you could always give that a small rotation and see if you can find one you might just need to move it a little bit just to get one good star in view or something as I say at the moment I've not had to do that so um, from my uh, reducer on my RC8 I need to be an 85mm backspace so a very uh, useful tool for anything like this is uh, one of these and it will let you get really accurate measurement on your gaps and your spaces and etc so um, worth purchasing a tool like this um, it means you're going to get your backspacing dead right so I'm just going to put the extension pieces in place and then I've got my 0.75 reducer flattener to go on there and this is my imaging train to go back into my my scope that's basically the off axis guider in place when you insert the camera what you're what you're basically looking for is that the distance from the focal point to the sensor here is exactly the same coming off and going up to the sensor on the uh, on the camera so that can go in I find um, it showed a picture with the extension pieces so if you need it to come out further you can and it's f further than that you add, add the extension pieces on and that allow you to bring it up so I actually found it's literally just off the bottom what I would suggest is that you get focus in the daytime now what's very important is that you focus your scope first of all make sure that is totally in focus on something and then once you're happy with that then focus the guide camera once you've got both in focus they should they should stay in focus and you've got that set at the correct distance at night time you can obviously really hone that in if you can get a nice br bright star or get this into use an autofocus routine or use a batten off mask to get this totally in focus you can then get this on a bright star with a batten off mask and check that or you can just do it by eye moving it in and out and just making sure the star is as small as it can be um, some people say that the guide scope doesn't have to be perfectly in focus but I'm a bit fussy and I do I do like it in focus but that's basically how you fit it now I'm going to just show you a couple of pictures of what I did with my uh, scope I focused in on a pylon which was which is actually a few miles away on a on a horizon and once I got the main scope almost in focus on that I then concentrated on the guide scope and got that roughly in focus as well on the same target I then tweak that at night time on stars and that is the best way of doing it okay so we've um, focused in our guide star and we got that looking quite nice and I've run um, a calibration a guide assistant applied the uh, suggestions and then run another calibration I'm now on the pinwheel galaxy so I picked a target which I wanted to get some subs on and I've got the uh, mount guiding and as you can see there it's actually sitting at 0.46 um, and it's it's not even great seeing tonight the uh, there's a bit of high cloud about uh, a little bit of humidity so there you can see the off axis guide in there giving some really good results 0.44 at the moment so it settled down really nicely um, at first it jumped about a little bit and I was having a little tweak with things but uh, 
the only changes I would suggest that you make to anything is bring down the aggressiveness after you've applied the um, minimum movements that the guide assistant suggests bring your aggressiveness down because what you normally find is it will overcorrect. so if you see a graph where you're correcting one direction and then correcting in the opposite direction it is too aggressive and you need to just bring that down as I say I've got my RA there at 55 and I've got my deck at 70 so nice guiding 0.43 it's dithering now so that will go off but uh, let's have a look at the sub and you can see that I mean it's very faint but it's a 60 second sub but um, yeah there's, uh, there's a lot of high cloud about at the moment but there, there you go. So that's how you fit your off-axis guider. And as I say, get focus in the daytime as best you can. And then you can just do a small tweak at night, just literally trying to get the star as small as possible. Um, and then run your calibration and your guide assistant. And there's no reason why you shouldn't get good guiding. And as you can see here, the guiding's fine and at 1625 millimeters you know 0 0.5 that's going to give me about as sharp a star image as i can get really so um i'm i'm really pleased with that so anyway i hope uh, this has helped you in some way or given you some guidance if you've uh, thinking of going down the off-axis guiding route or if you've struggled with it um, if you've got any questions i'm more than happy to help you please uh, put them in the comment section below um, love to wish you all clear skies and uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers now. Bye.